Not up all night. Southland weather from KFI cloudy again in the morning and sunny temps up to 60 to the beaches, low to mid 70s for Metro LA. 70s in the valleys, low 70s for Inland OC, 75 to 80 in the IE, and warmer on Wednesday. Right now it's 67 in the orange, 65 in the beach, 68 in Northridge, and 66 in Sun Valley. We lead local, live from the KFI 24 hour newsroom. I'm Deborah Mark. Threw in the dumpster on Friday was the head of the Department of Homeland Security and Secretary Alejandro Mayorga. He uh, somehow got out of the dumpster and went on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace. Oh, and it was a bumbling, bumbling interview and all kinds of lies and contradictions and confusing numbers, and none of it made any sense. And, and Chris Wallace passed out at the end of it. Uh, yes, it was an exhaustive interview to get to the bottom of the problem with the Haitian migrants in Texas and how many are in the U.S. and what's next and how did this happen and how are we going to prevent this from happening. We really got none of those They want this to go on. Uh, it, it just looked bad for a few days and then they uh, had everybody uh, clear out. Most, most of the people you saw underneath the bridge are now uh, living in the United States and will be here for good. That's, that's, that's how they cleared up the problem. We're going to talk now with Andrew Arthur. He is uh, with the Center for Immigration Studies, a resident fellow in law and policy. He wrote a piece uh, for the center at CIS.org about the confusing policies, the confusing public statements, and just the general incompetence of the Biden administration, the Secretary Mayorkas, the Vice President, the whole thing. And it's uh, actually a a rather entertaining read, except it, 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 it also makes your blood boil. So let's get uh, Andrew Arthur on. Welcome to Johnny Ken Show. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Uh, what, what the hell is going on? I mean, this, this is a, was, a complete disaster. Yeah, that was my question. I quoted the great Vince Lombardi. What the hell is going on here? Uh, because I, I really can't tell you. I saw pictures. I was uh, under the bridge in Del Rio about five weeks ago. And it was bad enough the only three border patrol agents that I saw in my time in Del Rio, other than the checkpoints, were uh, the five that were under the bridge. The rest of them were all processing migrants uh, and caring for migrants, eating baby bottles, changing diapers, that sort of thing. But the whole situation blew up uh, at the beginning of last week when all of a sudden uh, 15,000, 20,000, I don't know if uh, you have said that you know, clear about the numbers, showed up sort of crossing the Rio Grande, it's very shallow right there uh, at Del Rio, and uh, entered the United States and kept coming. Eventually they pitched their own uh, refugee camp down under the international bridge that uh, runs into uh, Ciudad Acuna right across the uh, river. So that's what happened. How many have been released? How many have been detained? How many were sent back? Those numbers have just fell down. Um, since you were down there, did you hear that they were walking across a dam? And, and it, it was yeah, almost, like, almost like a roadway that crosses the river there? Yeah, it's interesting because I was embedded with uh, Texas State Troopers. And by the way, Governor Alex Troopers are the only people who are providing any sort of border security uh, in Del Rio. But uh, when you flew over the river, you can actually see the path in the uh, algae at the bottom of the river from where lines of migrants could cross over. It's about probably a foot and a half deep, maybe not even that high. And when I was down there, uh, there were young Mexican men who were forcing people across the river, and then there were people who were bathing in the river before they changed their clothes to turn themselves into the border truck. But yeah, it's not terribly deep, and the one thing that really struck me was, because I was staring at the, uh, the smugglers who were bringing these people across, they looked at me with disdain, as if I would have the temerity to actually, you know, stare at them. Not, you know, I wasn't even looking at the news, you know, that I would, you know, wonder why they were doing it. It's their river. It's if, not ours. If, if we wanted to, could we put up some kind of temporary barrier there to stop the flood? Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at the pictures, that's actually what the Texas State Troopers did. They lined up their patrol cars. These are highway patrolmen. But they lined up their patrol cars on the bank to form a barrier so that uh, additional people didn't come across. 
there should be a wall there. There's supposed to be a wall there. Uh, but that wall actually stops probably about a tenth of a mile from where you saw the people cross. It's just it stops the building materials to lay down the ground, and that's where they were on January the 20th when Joe Biden took off. The building materials are laying on the ground. That's correct. Yeah, they're just uh, rushing in the yard uh, along the river back. Uh, this is crazy. Well, uh, I guess I guess nobody in Biden administration really cares, right? This is what they want to happen. Yeah, and you know that's really the only way that uh, you can look at this objectively. Uh, Border Patrol had told us back in June uh, that they were, I think, they're 1,500 agents for a 55,000 square mile area. Uh, that, you know, they didn't have the resources, that they were concerned that people were going to cross really quickly. The uh, cartel controlled most of the border from uh, Imperial Beach all the way to Gulf of Mexico. But that particular spot is controlled by the CJMG, the Holistic uh, Generation Cartel. They have a logo and everything. But uh, CJMG doesn't actually charge migrants to cross uh, as most of the other cartels do, about a thousand bucks a migrant. And so consequently, uh, 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 it's a very popular uh, 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 spot. Why don't they tell people to cross? Because that way, uh, they can uh, pass uh, the pay uh, so they can run all the drugs that they want across the border. But yeah, the so border, border Patrol had warned the Biden administration that the coming second was done. Again, I didn't see a single Border Patrol vehicle on the road. I think that three years ago, and it was, you know, every other vehicle you saw was there from when the white vehicle with the green stripe Border Patrol. But uh, this time around, nobody, and it would be never going to happen, and it's never going to happen again. Well, I mean, here's the question. Whatever the numbers are, it appears that a majority of the Haitian migrants that were there under that bridge have been released into the United States. So what happened to the other potential migrants when they learned this, this news? Well, they're going to come right up. The only thing that's really holding the migrants back is this transfer means the Mexican government. Uh, the Mexican government is set up with having large numbers of first-country nationals other than that country to face the birth of their country on the way to the United States to respond to this question. The workers just don't like it. So consequently, most of those folks are being, uh, you know, held back by uh, the Mexican military at uh, down in Papatula and Calisto down at the southern border of Mexico, uh, but, you know, the Mexican government can only hold it back so long. I can't even imagine the conversation that uh, our Secretary of State is having with uh, his best counterparts, but I can guarantee you they're not good. But if the Mexican government ever, you know, lets up on that pressure, which I can imagine them doing, um, the, uh, the border is just going to be inundated. The, you know, 1.472 million people who are there in legal is going to be eclipsed uh, next year. It's going to be 3 million, and no one is talking about this. It's, it's a good old thing. Yeah, I don't know if you listened to the interview that Alejandro Mayorkas did with Fox News. Yes, they be trying to act like this is business as usual. Ah, we see this from time to time. Don't worry about it. Yeah, there's an important point that uh, Secretary Mayork has delighted, and again, he's a lawyer and a prosecutor. If you've ever seen him testify before Congress, he says that a lot. But um, every migrant who enters illegally is supposed to be detained. That's what the law says. Congress mandates detention. Uses the word shall be detained. But none of these people are being detained. And Mayork has considered he said only about 3,000 of them are being detained, and then we'll figure out what to do with them. Now, everybody who entered illegally was supposed to be detained. And if they were detained, they wouldn't be coming because they're only coming because they expect to be allowed into the United States. The vast majority, as I understand it, are now Governor DeSantis' problem because they're all making their way to the Sunshine State. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Some kind of payback to DeSantis? You know, it, it's interesting. I wouldn't want to ascribe uh, base motives to anybody. I was certainly taught that by my parents. But it's, you know, very interesting that, uh, you know, states that are most adversely affected, Texas and now Florida, are the ones who have been the biggest burns under the Biden administration staff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to look at all of this and that the all its richness, but for the time being, I'm going to give. Secretary of the Orchestra, President Biden, the benefit of the doubt. Do you think the public is eventually going to get uh, tired of this and this will have an impact on their voting next year? If you've looked at the polling numbers, you'll see that uh, immigration has been 
Uh, the biggest shortfall to the Biden administration from day one. Uh, back in February, uh, a majority of Americans disapproved of the, of the uh, president's immigration policy. But is this something they're going to vote on, though? Oh, absolutely. And it's important to understand how people vote. If you are in favor of uh, immigration enforcement, then you will actually vote for immigration enforcement. If you're against immigration enforcement, you generally vote based on something else. Part of the reason, in fact, 538, the polling group found that the main reason that, uh, or the largest reason that uh, Donald Trump was elected president was because of his immigration stance. I have a feeling that, especially the South Texas said this, uh, many of which are actually occupied by uh, Democrats right now, that there is going to be a reckoning at the polls. We've seen uh, South Texas Latinos shift over to the Republican Party. In fact, in Zapata County, there was even a Republican Party. Yet Donald Trump became the first president to Warren Harding to win the majority of the votes to folks in Zapata County. We see similar uh, trends like that in other counties that are adversely affected uh, by uh, the migrant surge. By the way, those South Texas counties are uh, almost uh, exclusively uh, Latino, again, it's a term that I don't like to use. They prefer the term Pajano uh, because they are original Texans. Uh, but, you know, they uh, are disapproving of the president's policies. They approved of uh, Donald Trump's policies and vote accordingly. All right, they thank will. you. Andrew, very good stuff. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. All right, that's Andrew Arthur. He's a resident fellow in law and policy for the Center for Immigration Studies. A lot of good stuff there. Go to cis.org. More coming up. Deborah Marquez News. So, Cal Gas and the Ferry Company have agreed to pay up to $1.8 billion to settle the claims of more than 35,000 people affected by a gas leak in Aliso Viejo in 2015. L.A. County DA George Gascon says he will be tossing out more than 50,000 pot-related convictions. Cheryl Burke of Dancing with the Stars has gone into quarantine after announcing she has tested positive for COVID-19. Double on the 10 and we will check in with the for a fine the sky next. Social Security was never meant to be the main source of income in the economy. It's been a supplement to your other savings, pensions, and 401k. But when does Social Security fit into your retirement income strategy? How can you best maximize it? Do you hold off on collecting it because of tax implications? Call 333 Plan ESE right now. Checking answers from Edelman Financial Engine with a free Social Security and Retirement Review. It is not a science strategy, but a deeper look at your future retirement income. A fiduciary financial planner will review your portfolio to help us choice not too risky. Then they'll create your very own personal financial plan with a social security analysis to help you reach your goals. The plan is worth $800, but it's free if you call now. Call 833-PLAN-EFE by tonight at 10 p.m. That's 833-PLAN-EFE. Or visit EdelmanFinancialEngine.com. Build more security into your future. This is former Notre Dame quarterback Brady Quinn. Here's what's trending from the iHeart Sports Network. Presented by Staples Choice. The Clippers' Kawhi Leonard explained today that his ACL injury played a heavy factor into his decision to sign a four-year deal with the team. Chief said coach Andy Reid was released from the hospital after he was taken there by ambulance after yesterday's game against the Chargers due to an illness. And the NFL is reinstating former All-Pro wide receiver Josh Gordon after suspending him in 2019 due to violations of the league's substance abuse policy and he's expected to sign with the team. I'm Tim Gaffer. Staples Connect helps your business grow with custom printed sales and marketing materials. Get 20% off on fans or first week when you spend $75 or more. Explore what's new at your local Staples. Offer any 10 to exclusions apply. Visit staples.com slash signage for details. Staples Connect. We have a crash on the 10 in Santa Monica. It's going to be the westbound side, right there at the McClure Tunnel, basically, where the pen becomes TCH. Uh, there's going to be a couple of vehicles involved there, so watch out for that. Uh, that's going to be there for a bit. KFI in the sky, and help the uh, injured by that one this time. KFI in the sky, sponsored by injury attorney, superwoman, superlawyer.com, Michael Fry, and looking at things for the east of there. Yeah, well, it's always saying that the problem of the 22, it's the 22 eastbound, just a little past Golden West. Overturned pick'em up truck there in the middle lanes, and that is unusual slowing down. Bumper to bumper into the 405 hookup into Seal Beach, and what you could do, go 405 southbound, avoid it, go down to West Vista Boulevard, and enjoy that beach. 
Yeah. Something in the last story. Nothing went awry in her brain, huh? Is that, is that one of these, like, goofy guys with a beard walking around in his underwear? No, not a guy living with his mother who's talking about fire over to their dad. No, she's like, she's like the strangest arson um, suspect I've ever seen. They think she may have set a number of other fires. They have yeah. into this, they do believe definitely she's responsible for this one, known as the farm fire. I mean, of all the things to go wrong in the brain of a highly intelligent, educated woman, why this? Why this uh, a fire truck? All right, one more sound bite, uh, well, I don't know, clip, from the interview between Chris Wallace of Fox News and the person we've been talking about this hour, who's actually still in the dumpster on Friday, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who so basically just blathered away when Wallace tried to nail him down on the numbers of Haitians who are now in the United States, but this is one that People have been interested in it. They're going to cut number five, and this, of course, is the concerns about some of the migrants having COVID-19 and bringing infections into communities through Texas and Florida, wherever they end up. And, of course, you can test that on visitors coming to the United States, like tourists from Europe. You would think we would do something about migrants who have been released. Let's listen to the back and forth. Of the 30,000 Haitians who came across the border into Del Rio, how many did your department test for COVID? So we have strict COVID testing protocols that we apply how across many? the board. How many? We test, isolate, and quarantine unaccompanied children. We work with nonprofit organizations to test families, those who are in ICE custody are tested, isolated, and well, 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 well. those who are expelled under the Title 42 Public Health Authority well, well, well. are returned uh, immediately. They are not placed in immigration court proceedings, yes. and those who do not test, but because they are returned well, immediately. Well, well. But your own department, Inspector General, said that your testing policy and the failure to test a lot of people who end up in this country, that you rely on local or state officials, and a lot of people don't get tested, has put communities in this country at risk. We concurred with those recommendations. We made improvements. Uh, that is also a method of news. That is exactly why we have an independent review mm -hmm. of our operations mm -hmm. to see where we can make uh, improvements, where we can strengthen our processes, and that is exactly what we did too. An hour is fantastic. That is a flavor. At one minute and 14 seconds. Yeah, we have procedures and protocols. We've heard the recommendation, yes. Uh, uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. He had him, he had him with, uh, a minute 14 seconds, this bloviating diarrhea, never answered the question. Notice the importance of it. Going back to how they want to go after uh, the governors, the census and Abbott and Florida and Texas, uh, they're the ones uh, critiquing Biden the loudest, and uh, suddenly they've had spikes in COVID, but how much of that is spread from all the migrants that have been sent to Texas and Florida? Maybe 800,000 are coming to the U.S. who finally took off it. And then you juice up the, uh, the uh, 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 COVID stories in Texas and Florida, and then you start criticizing DeSantis and Abbott for screwing up the state because they don't have enough mandates. So that, I, I wonder, there's got to be a, a political aspect to this. There's got to be. It can't be a coincidence. Why those two states? I just love the way you just keep citing the playbook. Well, we have protocols in place for testing, and they just list the testing protocols. You don't answer the question. We, we, we know what the laws are. We know what the rules are. You don't follow any of You're not testing people. That's why when Chris Wallace asked that, he should have uh, given us a number. should have said, well, we've done 50,000 tests. We've done 112,000 tests. They don't do many tests. All right, they have uh, arrested a woman for starting one of the latest big fires in California, up in Shasta County, something called the Fawn Fire. And boy, her behavior is one for the books, even though she doesn't fit the profile of an arsonist. She certainly is a strange lady. We'll talk about it next. John and Ken, KFI, Deborah Marquez. Prosecutors in Orange County say there is no criminal liability for the COVID-19 death of a jail inmate awaiting trial for murder. A letter to the Sheriff's Department says a review of the case found the inmate repeatedly refused medical care, including COVID testing and medication for schizophrenia. The man had been charged with stabbing his mother to death in 2017 and injuring her 75-year-old boyfriend. 
Hospitals in New York are getting ready to fire thousands of health care workers for not complying with the COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Today is a significant deadline. It reflects my priority to just stop this virus deadly threat. In order from the state health department, says all health care workers need to get their first shot by today. Governor Kathy Hochul says getting people vaccinated is a priority. I need to keep people in the state safe. And we'll be nation leader with our mandate. The governor says health care workers who are fired for refusing to get vaccinated will not be eligible for unemployment insurance. The news is brought to you by Ruger Hero. The man who tried to kill President Reagan in 1981 could soon be free to live without restrictions. John Keithley Jr. was released from a psychiatric hospital five years ago and allowed to live with his mom in Virginia. The doctors had to make sure he got his meds and therapy. A federal judge now says any restrictions can be lifted next year if Keithley remains mentally stable. Keithley's lawyer, Barry Levine, says his client is no longer a threat. I think John has done extremely well over a long period of time. He's continued his full remission. He's done nothing dangerous. The judge says he will sign off on the plan this week. And Instagram is putting a pause on the development of its Instagram kids platform geared towards children younger than 13. David Pierce, editor-in-chief of the website Proto Call, says Facebook is owned by Instagram. It's taking a lot of pressure as it related to how social media affects kids' mental health. It's pretty clear that Facebook just saw the writing on the wall here and was like, look, all this is going to do is cause us pain, and it's never going to get us anywhere, and it might be fodder for Congress to push even harder in the name of protecting kids than it would otherwise. The head of Instagram says the pause will allow the company to work with parents, experts, policymakers, and regulators. We have a crash on the 118 in Moore Park. Yeah, this one just popped up. It's going to be on the way. It's going to be eastbound. It's past Collins. It's past Collins Drive is where this is. CHP there. Kind of work with that. Looks like two different wrecks were actually reported at that location. So a big mess there. Hey, if I understand, I'm going to buy an easy return. Superwoman, superlawyer.com. Michael Bryan looking at things in Ontario. And the problem is five up the front. And yes, sir, as I can say, because we're just playing out right there. And an extra tight now, so we'll get through on that stretch. Even worse on the eastbound 10. Pretty much slow there from the Kellogg interchange, leading to 57 over into Montclair. And then again from Fort to Ontario, much of the way into North Montana. And there's also a trouble troublespot in Orange County, a couple of them. That 22 eastbound, just about Golden West. They're playing up an overturned pickup there. That is pretty solid stuff, right to the 405 merge into Seal Beach. And there's problems on the other side of the fence. 22 westbound at Fairview Hester. Looks like they're just playing to the right shoulder on that one. Backing up into the Orange Crush and affecting the South 57 back towards Lincoln. If it is an accident, visit superwomansuperlawyer.com. Mike O'Brien, KFI in the Sky. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Will Kohlschreiber. I will give you $1,300 off LASIK. This is for you. Only for KFI listeners from Dr. Charles Manger at Saddleback Eye Center. I'll give you a certificate. $1,300 off LASIK. And I can only give away 10 of these discount certificates to 10 KFI listeners who call now and schedule a free LASIK exam. The number is coming in moments. You must be sick of hearing your eye doctor, or maybe several eye doctors tell you that LASIK won't work for you. You go see Dr. Manger. Whether you're nearsighted, farsighted, you have astigmatism, or you just wear reading glasses, Dr. Manger can help you. I had three eye doctors tell me I couldn't have LASIK. They were all wrong. I'll give you a certificate, $1,300 off LASIK. You must be one of the first 10 KFI listeners to call now and schedule a free exam. You ready? Call 866-559-4444. 866-559-4444. Southland weather from KFI. Cloudy again in the morning and sunny. Highs upper 60s at the beaches. Low to mid-70s for Metro LA. 70s in the valleys. Low 70s for Inland OC. 75 to 80 in the IE. We leave local live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Deborah Mark. Attention savvy investors. Are you looking to hedge against inflation and increase steady monthly cash flow? How about the safety and security of a real estate investment without the hassle of being a landlord? 
They would be for cash out of the stock market risk and volatility and take some money off the table. Instead, receive 10% annualized monthly payouts with bonuses targeted to 21%. NRIA is an industry-leading real estate development firm in its 15th year constructing strategically located, lower-risk, high-demand properties in unique neighborhoods based on supply, demand, and balance. Call 800-814-14 to start your due diligence. A great fit for safety-oriented investors desiring monthly cash flow and diversification into carefully curated real estate. Learn more about the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund at nria.net or call 800-814-14. That's 800-814-14. Hey, Gary, how are things? Things are great, are so but I crushed my mortgage payment with owning without even leaving my couch. I got a refi at a great low rate, and owning did it all in less than three weeks. It was easy. No muss, no fuss. Be like Gary. Call owning at 855-5-OWNING and crush your mortgage payment with today's 15-year fixed refi at 1.5% rate, 1.912% APR. That's right, 15-year fixed at 1.5% rate, 1.912% APR. Even if you've refinanced recently, call 855-5-ONI and let us crush your monthly payment even more. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation and the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. If it's a credit of hope, call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lending. You can crush it, too, for the 15-year fix, 1.5%, 1.912% APR. Call 855-5-ONI. That's 855-5-ONI, or go to owning.com. Discerning drivers will appreciate the 2004 date for the Unfit Evo. The St. Paul 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 has burned some properties. The woman that's been arrested for starting this fire is a strange one indeed. First of all, the fact that it's a woman, that's kind of rare. Alexandra Suverneva. She's 30 years old. She comes from Palo Alto. And the first thing you got to hear about her story is when she was apprehended and questioned, she said she was hiking to Canada. That was her destination. Yeah, she's she went off the rails. Uh, she, she, I, I, she has a degree from Caltech. Uh, she supposedly was a PhD student at a forestry school in New York State. But, yeah, her life went off the rails. She previously worked as a scientist for her most recent job as an SAT tutor. Yeah, I think she's a very, uh, very young uh, very woman. Long blonde hair, and she, uh, you look at her, She's the last person that you would pick out to be an arsenal. Yeah, I think that completely defies the fact. So, apparently, people in the area told investigators about her. They found her. They said she was acting strangely. Here's her story. She got thirsty while out hiking to Canada. Found a puddle in a dry creek bed. But she determined that the puddle the was bare urine. So she tried to filter the water using a tea bag. She was a scientist. But that failed. So she tried to start a fire to boil the water. She claimed that it was too wet to start a fire. She drank the water and continued walking. And that kind of went to the door. That's a very dangerous thing. None of that may be true. I, I think it's just called a breakdown of the brain. The booking for uh, her is not so attractive unless you've seen that one from the Yeah, I've seen it. It's all for sure. The booking's got the crazy eyes and her hair is all disheveled. She's got a lot of acne and scars on her face. But you could see she could be uh, oh, yeah. a really good looking woman. Just, uh, uh, she also worked as a yoga teacher and described herself as a shaman. Mm -hmm. There's that word again. Remember, we learned that from the January 6th insurrection. <laughs> oh, the guy who wore the horns and the fur. He, he was a shaman.